Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. It is so good to be connected together through this medium. And we're glad that you have joined us on this second Sunday of Easter. Even though we're not under the same roof, I do believe that God is connecting us together in this time of worship. And we're glad that you have tuned in. A few announcements before we begin our worship this morning. I would like to uh, remind you, if you don't already know, that there is a daily phone devotion now. If you call into the church office, uh, a devotion will be provided every day um, from one of our ministerial staff. We would ask, though, that you call after 3 o'clock in the day, and then you can call all the way until 9 o'clock the next morning when the phones will be physically manned and, and answered. Uh, that way there's no confusion um, with who's calling for the devotions and who is calling to talk to a live person. I want to remind you about Cyber Women meeting Monday night from 7 to 8, and the info on that is on Facebook. There is also going to be a Cyber Bible study on Galatians this coming Wednesday night that Pastor Kathy is offering on Zoom at 6 p.m. There's going to be on Thursday a chat with both pastors, Thursday at 1.30 in the afternoon. And uh, again, information about that on the website. And I'll give you the email address if you're interested in any of these things in just a moment. And it will also be on the bottom of your screen. There's also Disciple Cyber Disciple Training Camp on, um, and just simply find out about that with Facebook or the website. And so if you're interested in any of these things, again, check the website, Facebook, or contact the church at info at stmatlutheran.org. Lastly, let me just remind you that we continue our faith story sharing every Wednesday night here at the church. This week will be Amy Schlitzer, and that will be provided at 715 Wednesday evening. Again, welcome to worship as we gather together from all parts of Hanover and some respects other parts of the country to glorify and lift up our praises to God on this second Sunday of Easter. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. 
Call us back to your ways, O oh God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Hear these words of forgiveness. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away, the tomb found empty. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too, in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters are with you. Amen. We continue with our hymn of praise this joyful Easter tide. eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues with our children's sermon and that will be led by our Deacon Jan Davis. Good morning, everybody. Last Sunday was Easter, and we heard the story about Jesus being alive again. He wasn't in the tomb that Sunday morning. He was alive. Well, the Marys had run and told the disciples that Jesus was alive again. Well, that night, the night of Easter morning, the disciples were all together in a room. And suddenly there was Jesus with them. Well, the disciples were so happy to see Jesus that they began to celebrate. And one of the disciples though wasn't there. His name was Thomas. After Jesus left, Thomas showed up. Well, the other disciples told him that they had seen Jesus alive, but Thomas didn't believe them. Thomas looked at them like they were crazy. He said that nobody who had died had ever come back alive again. And he said, unless I can see him and touch him, I'm not going to believe. Well, a week went by. And I kind of imagined that all during that week, the disciples kept telling Thomas, Thomas, please believe us. We've seen Jesus. He's alive again. And Thomas would just shake his head and say, I am not going to believe it until I see him for myself. But then again, they were together in the house. And that time Thomas was with them. And guess who showed up? It was Jesus. So Thomas could see and hear Jesus. And Jesus came to him and said, Thomas, I'm here, I'm alive. You can touch my hands, you can touch my feet where they nailed me to the cross. And you can see me and hear me. Well, Thomas then said that he believed. Now Jesus also said, now Thomas, there are going to be some people who are going to be able to believe even though they haven't seen me. You believe because you've seen and heard me. 
Well, we are some of those people today. We can't hear or see Jesus here in person, but, and we can't touch him, but we know that Jesus is here with us. Jesus sends his spirit to us to help us believe that he is alive again. And he promises to be with us. And we hear all those stories about Jesus in the Bible so we can know more about him. And we can also see Jesus in another way. We can see when Jesus' love is working through other people. So whenever somebody does a good thing for someone else, it's like we can see Jesus' love. So what I'd like you to do today is to look around for ways that you can see love working. And that's a way that you can see Jesus with you alive today. So thank you all for sharing with me today. And now we're gonna hear Pastor David read this story for us from the Bible. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand at his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Doubt. The world is full of it. As individuals and as people, we doubt. We often express that doubt towards other people, in our institutions, our places of work, and even our government. Many today have questions, if not doubt, in our political system after the alleged involvement Russia had with our national elections a few years ago. There are many questions, if not doubt, in our government now, even over handling the coronavirus, taking precautions, the necessary ones, that is, getting supplies, stockpiling our supply for some, such a situation as this, or handling what is happening now even properly, much less the wonderment of whether or not 
and when it will be time to reboot our country and start our economy again. In my 30 plus years of being a parish pastor, there were many congregational meetings when someone, if not a number of people in the congregation, doubted that our church would be able to make its budget. Many doubted a number of years ago that the Chicago Cubs would ever win the World Series. And growing up in Houston and being an Astros fan, I must admit I felt a great deal of doubt that the Astros would ever pull off a World Series and really didn't start believing until Game 2 of the World Series when Astros beat the Dodgers in L.A. And now, I struggle with doubt that they deserved that win, that World Series, after the apparent cheating scandal they were involved in. We often come to church, I would suspect, and maybe even on Easter Sunday, with some doubt. Doubt in the resurrection, doubt that God can forgive, that God could actually love us in spite of ourselves. We carry around a great deal of angst, especially in these difficult times. Life is challenging. Life is hard. We struggle with making sense of the world and all the hatred and ambiguity that exists in it. We don't like to admit it, but we doubt sometimes that God even exists. And if God does exist, why does God seem so silent, so detached, so much of the time, especially now? When I have these moments of doubt, they actually cause me to have doubt in myself. I know what I was taught. I know what I believe, what I'm supposed to believe. And sometimes the hallelujahs we sing on Sunday mornings in church, sometimes they ring a little hollow. And I know I'm not the only one. Right? Our gospel for today is the same gospel we always have on that Sunday after Easter Sunday. It is the resurrection story continued. It is Easter Sunday evening. And Jesus appears to his disciples, except for Thomas, in that room where they are locked away for fear from the Jews, hiding from the Jews, filled with doubt. And later, when Thomas returns after Jesus had appeared, they excitedly tell him, we have seen the Lord. Of course, <laughs> Thomas does not believe them, how could it be? It's simply too good to be true. Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, he says, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Doubting Thomas, as he is known, you know, I've thought for years Thomas has always gotten a bad rap. I think he's not so much a doubter as he is a realist. After all, he did see Jesus nailed to a cross and die. And you really can't blame him for wanting a real encounter with a really risen Lord just like the other disciples got. So this story seems pretty real to me. It's certainly one I can relate to. 
The reality of this story is not just in Thomas's doubt, but in the bigger picture. How hard it can be to believe sometimes. When you read through the resurrection accounts of the Gospels, you really qu quite quickly begin to realize that Thomas is not alone in his doubt. In fact, doubt isn't the exception, but the rule. No one, not even all, after all the predictions, no one says to Jesus when he appears to them in that upper room, Welcome back! We knew it! Or even... What took you so long, Jesus? No one anticipates Jesus' return when he shows up. Everyone is surprised, and in a sense, everyone has doubted what Jesus has said all along. Everyone. All this makes me wonder that maybe doubt isn't the opposite of faith but actually part of it. Maybe even an essential part of faith. This understanding shapes the way I hear Jesus' words to Thomas. Do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. I, I don't think, as I used to, that Jesus is really rebuking Thomas here. Instead, I think Jesus is blessing all those, and that means you and me, who have managed to believe without ever seeing and having the benefit of 2,000 years of history and time and the witness of so many that even in the midst of all of our doubts, still find a way to believe. We are Easter people. We are resurrection people. And as such, we don't feel the need to hide or pretend that we don't have doubts. We do have doubts. We will always have doubts in this life, but we believe in spite of and alongside of those doubts. It is in doubting that it causes us to seek and to ask and to grow, not only in our faith, but in all of life and in our relationships that we have with our Lord Jesus. As resurrection people, we don't have to have it all figured out. In helping a neighbor or feeding someone who is hungry or caring for someone in need, we certainly don't have to have it all figured out and we really can't have it all figured out during this pandemic because so much of what we are experiencing and dealing with is day by day and no one really knows the answers to anything. But we simply as Easter people trust and believe that we are in the Lord's hands. If we have to have it all figured out ahead of time, then we'll never get started at living and sharing our faith and it will never be fully realized in us. But have you ever wondered if those acts of mercy and kindness and care make a difference in the world? There are so many hungry and hurting, lonely and scared people in our world. Have you ever wondered if the few that I can reach out to, that I can help, really makes much of a difference? Does the hand I extend or the listening ear I offer really change anything? I believe it does. 
I believe it's a ripple effect. But I do wonder at times and doubt. But we are resurrection people. And because of that, we believe as well as doubt in the midst of believing. Let me say that again. As resurrection people, and because of that, we believe as well as doubt in the midst of our believing. In this fragile way, we act, we reach out, we feed, we care, we tend, we struggle, we work, we forgive. We love, all without any guarantees, just a promise. And the promise is from our Lord, who has never failed fulfilling a promise, and who continues to bless those who believe amidst their fears, amidst their doubts, amidst all the uncertainties of this life. May God bless you today in the mundaneness of the life that we are living these days, that you may embrace your doubts so that they do not consume you or overwhelm you, but cause you to continue to seek out your faith in the one who calls you to life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dine with me, my lovely child. I've prepared for you a place through the bread and the wine. Refresh yourself in grace. Find in me the bread of life to sustain and nourish you. Take the cup. Oh!
bread of life, never hunger again. Take the cup of redemption. Come dine with me. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers of intercession. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and then I invite you to respond with hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promise of hope, of healing and resurrection, we join the world, people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O oh God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O oh God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally, especially during this time of pandemic. We pray for all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world and health for all people. Bless the efforts of healthcare professionals, essential providers, and all others who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O oh God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death that we may embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Before we offer the benediction and the musical offering, I want to take this moment to thank all of you for worshiping with us on this day and at this time. We also thank you for your continued offerings that support the ministry through our congregation and the community. As you know, many are in need, and it may be even some of you who find yourselves at a place where you are feeling uh, vulnerable or feeling um, that you are needing help. Please reach out to us through our congregation. You may call the church uh, through the week. Uh, or we answer phones from nine to three. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>